July of 2020, I was supposed to go on a vacation with my family to celebrate the fact that I had graduated from high school to Walt Disney World. It was going to be a big vacation. I was finally going to fulfill my dream of seeing Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Unfortunately, because of what happened during this year, that got postponed. And then I found out that we were going to Walt Disney World over the week of Christmas. And that was very exciting. And during it, I got to see what exactly Walt Disney World was doing to comply with guidelines set to ensure the healthy environment for guests and cast members, everyone there. And that's what this video is about. Welcome back to the Liam 501st channel. And today I am giving my thoughts on Walt Disney World in 2020, as well as my thoughts on Galaxy's Edge for seeing it for the very first time. For an entire week, starting on Christmas and ending on New Year's Eve, I got to spend an entire week in the most magical place on Earth. On Christmas morning, I got to wake up and we got to go to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge for the first time. That morning, my brother and I were going to be building our very own custom lightsabers at Savi's workshop. And that, for me, was one of the best possible things I could ever do on Christmas. Up until this point, I have not been to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So on Christmas Day, it was a dream come true. As someone who is not the biggest fan of the sequel trilogy, as in I liked The Force Awakens, and I do not like The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, I was absolutely blown away at what Disney has done at Batu. Galaxy's Edge is incredibly immersive. You feel like you are in Star Wars. They have shops, restaurants, rides, everything you could possibly imagine in a Walt Disney World theme park centered around Star Wars. The two rides there, Rise of the Resistance and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, are a lot of fun. I think Rise of the Resistance could potentially be my favorite ride I have ever been on. It's incredibly immersive. You feel like you're a part of the ride, a part of the mission. I'm not going to go into any spoilers or anything for people who still want to experience the ride firsthand for myself. I went in not knowing anything. I know the rest of my family did a ton of research on uh, what the rides are about, what to do. I did none of that, and I was completely blown away. A lot of the stuff in Rise of the Resistance is, there were certain parts where I was like, I would have loved to have had this in the movie because of uh, the space battles. There were so, there's some, I will go into a little bit of detail. So on the ride, you're inside of a Star Destroyer. And when the resistance shows up, you're flying. You see in the windows, you see X-Wings and TIE Fighters dogfighting. And we didn't really get that in the sequel trilogy. And I would look at that and I would tell myself, that's all I want. That's a lot, one of the big things I wanted in the sequel trilogy was incredible dogfights. And we didn't really get that in the sequel trilogy. And that's one of the disappointing things. But other than that, other than that, the ride is amazing. This isn't about the sequel trilogy. This is about Galaxy's Edge. Smuggler's Run, though, I don't like as much. It's kind of, it, 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 it just It was still fun. I, I will give it that. It is a lot of fun. There's three positions. There's pilot, gunner, and engineer. Engineer is not that great. You just push a couple buttons and that's it. You don't really do anything else. It, it does feel like you are flying the Millennium Falcon. The two pilots, though, are probably the most... Um, they're not my favorite, but they're probably the best because you get to pilot the ship left, right, or up and down. And I would say the best part of that ride is you get to pull the lever that sends the ship into hyperspace. The gunner is my personal favorite because I love being a gunner. Like, I love the gunner position on all the Star Wars ships. And by push, it, it, it's really just pushing a button on the side of the ship, but I blew up 17 TIE Fighters when I did it. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it with my family. We got to do that. Three times? We got to do it three times uh, with... I got to do it three times with my family, and it was a ton of fun. Rise of the Resistance, I want to go back to it. It is not your usual uh, wait in line. It's, uh, it's a virtual queue, so you have to be on it like that, because we were able to get it all three times we went, and once you get it, you can't get it again. It's one and done on that day, where... 
on the Disney app, you go to Virtual Queues, the My Disney Experience app, Virtual Queues, and it'll be there. And I believe it's 7 and 1, 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. that the queues open up. And they fill up really fast. So if you want to be on top of it, you'll want to be there at 1, maybe a little bit early just to refresh, constantly refresh, and then get your queue, your party number, or your, your party count. And then it'll give you a boarding group. I believe it's... A lot of times it would uh, fill up in like 30 seconds. And there were people, I kid you not, when we were walking in the park, because we got Rise of the Resistance at the 7 queue, so we were able to get it early. But at 1 o'clock when it opened back up, we would hear people cheering that they got, the, that they got a, a boarding group. It was hilarious, and I was happy for them at the same time. The restaurants at Galaxy's Edge are really good. Um, the cantina, it wasn't really for me. Some of the uh, little samplers I didn't really love. I was very disappointed that I didn't like the blue milk. It just wasn't for me. The green milk wasn't that great either. Not for me. The uh, the Java juice, though, I actually enjoyed it. It kind of tasted like orange juice with a little of a, like an extra flavor. It was really good. I'll give that one that. Um, uh, Ronto wraps, I had the breakfast wrap and the lunch wrap. I would say the breakfast one is a lot better because it's got like the eggs the cheese and the sausage well they both have sausage but the egg and the cheese i would say was is much, was much better it was very good um then you have got docking bay seven which is like a quick service and there i had the the tip yip meal with the broccoli and the mac and cheese it was really good i enjoyed it quite a bit and there was actually a table where it is literally the wing one of the wing, four wings of an X-Wing from uh, the original trilogy. And my brother was like, whoa, that's a wing from an X-Wing in the original trilogy. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the chicken tip yip was really good. It was like a, just a piece of fried chicken you cut, you use a fork and knife with. Um, the restaurants were really good. I'd recommend it. The shops. So when it comes to the shops, first and foremost, you got Doc Ondar's, of course. Uh, where you have the Den of Antiques. There were two lines. There was the Legacy Saber line and the non-Legacy Saber line. If you were in line to do to get Legacy Sabers, you had you, they recommended that you scan and have a virtual queue and then come back later. When the, and then you would come back later because they had two lines. One went into the Legacy Saber uh, table and the other just went to the other table where you could buy the other stuff. I picked up quite a bit of stuff at Doc Ondar's. Um... I got Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi right here. Actually, it's a really cool replica. I have Darth Vader's from The Empire Strikes Back. This one is really cool. They actually make the movie accurate sounds from The Empire Strikes Back. Same with uh, Luke's. And this one was a little bit hard to get because I went to Hollywood Studios three times. Christmas, December 28th, and then New Year's Eve. They didn't have it Christmas Day or the 28th, but they had it on New Year's Eve. Thankfully, it was that day they got them in stock. It's the Ahsoka Tano Clone Wars... The Ahsoka Tano Clone Wars Legacy Sabers. I don't believe that uh, Lucasfilm has ever made these sabers. Like, either like the kid toys or um, the full replicas. So these are really cool... And after the Clone Wars Season 7, I was like... And when these were announced, I was sold immediately. So if you ever... But I will say, if you ever are thinking about these, if you ever find them, get them. Because they sold out like a week before we got there. And thankfully they came back in stock. And they're probably, they probably were probably out of stock by the time I got to them. Or shortly after. Uh, then you got the Droid Depot, and the Droid Depot is like the uh, Sabi, Sa uh, Sabi Saver workshop where you make a reservation and show up at a time. Um, they do have little droid trinkets there as well that you can pick up. Like there's um, an R2-D2 uh, cooking bowl that you can stir like cake batter in. They have little restraining bolt magnets you can put on the fridge. That was fun. Uh, some people in my members of my family did in fact build a droid. I didn't because I spent a lot of money on those sabers and I built my own lightsaber. This is power and control. I built it with a blue crystal and then at Doc Ondar's I picked up the red one. 
It wasn't the black kyber crystal. It is actually a cracked kyber crystal, like Kylo Ren's, and then a green one. I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but at uh, Doc Ondar, they are doing a special deal where you can, if you buy three blades of any size, you get it for $90. So I bought two long ones and a short one for the Ahsoka Saber. And that, because the long ones are 50 and the short ones are uh, 45. So I pretty much got one of these blades for free and then $5 off another one. And then when you do the Savi Saber, when you build your own, they give you a medium sized blade. So this is a couple inches saw shorter than the super long one and then a little bit bigger than the super short one. Overall, um, I had the most fun the first day and then the shopping part did in fact kind of, after, after you ride the rides and shop at everything, there's not much left to do. It's still fun to visit and feel that in Star Wars. You see the stormtroopers walk in. You got Rey, Chewie, and the resistance girl in the orange jacket. I can't remember her name. They're um, doing pictures and everything. They do also have Star Wars themed Coke and Sprite bottles as well, which that is actually really cool. I heard they gave <laughs> the airlines a little bit of trouble. Thankfully, we drove, so that's good. But yeah, I I would absolutely recommend Galaxy's Edge. If you're even if you're not a big sequel trilogy fan, I'd still go check it out at least once. Go ahead and check it out. You won't I don't think you'll you will regret it at all. Back on track to uh Walt Disney World. Uh I absolutely had a blast there. They were only at a limited capacity there. So at first everything was super long. The, the wait times and then by the time the sun started coming down the wait times were shorter and then like two hours before the parks would close everything was super short so that's when we do a lot we really rushed to get the rides some of the rides we hadn't done before uh like mine train for most of the day the seven dwarves one in magic kingdom was up to i'd say maybe an hour and a half the entire trip or the entire day every day and then the two hours before we left or bef before the park closed it was down to like 40 minutes it wasn't bad i love the mine train too so like you, you gotta ride it every day at magic kingdom epcot and hollywood studios which were the three parks i visited during this trip we didn't go to animal kingdom it's a little bit different from universal and how they're handling the guidelines you obviously still have to wear a face covering maintain social distancing both universal and disney had the floor marking six feet apart uh, but the big difference is that they had at Universal they had somebody in the line giving everybody hand sanitizer. They didn't do that at Disney. When you walk into a restaurant or a building, they usually have you sanitized before you go touch anything or go sit down for a restaurant. They do have hand sanitizer like two or three stations throughout the line, depending on the length of the line. So they're like, here's the hand sanitizer. We're not going to give you it. You can use it if you want, but we're not going to force you to use it. That was really cool. Um, another really big thing at Magic Kingdom is that they completely repainted uh, Cinderella Castle. I'm sure there will be a video uh, that'll show you. But now, like, it used to be faded white, maybe not quite white, and then gray at the bottom, but now it's like pink and then, or like a peachy pink color, and then a gray at the bottom. And then the, the gold parts are a lot more shiny. They are redoing the Main Street USA area. The train station at the very front, they're redoing it. They had a really clever way of hiding the their, their construction on it. They had like a little tent over it, but it's shaped like uh, the building. So it, it, it still kind of looks like it, but it's, a, it's like a picture now instead of uh, the actual building. Epcot, though, is going under complete and total construction. Like they've gutted a whole bunch of stuff and there were... Uh, walls up everywhere so you couldn't really you were limited on where you could go they're still working on a lot of stuff they had a um, like a little expo in one of the buildings that like shows what's in store they're bringing Guardians of the Galaxy to Epcot which is gonna be really exciting I love Guardians of the Galaxy looking forward to more Marvel Cinematic Universe stuff at Florida eventually and then uh, there's gonna be more Moana stuff more of that and it's really cool to see what's in store for Epcot. The rides are still there. 
and I enjoyed Magic Kingdom and Epcot a lot. Since we went to Walt Disney World in December and obviously after Christmas, there, uh, Disney is still doing the Christmas themed decorations and parades. So every now, uh, from time to time, you'd have uh, Mickey, Minnie, and the gang on the floats coming down Main Street, uh, dancing to Christmas songs, and then the other one was like the, all of the Disney princesses were on a float, uh, dancing on the float to the songs, and then there was even where they even brought Santa out, and he was um, he was on his sleigh float, and they had the reindeer in front. I would say. It's all really enjoyable. I love watching the parades go by. Um, and then at even Hollywood Studios, they had the Pixar characters doing it. They had uh, they had Goofy dressed up as Santa going in a Camaro. Goofy dressed as Santa in a Camaro driving down like over by the area by Star Tours and went to that uh, area behind the, the Jedi Temple. In Magic Kingdom, I would say the, the, the kind of downside is that they played the... They have one Christmas song that they play over and over and it got a little annoying um after a while so that's the that's the only downside is they only have one christmas song that they keep playing over and over other than that though incredibly enjoyable i think disney is incredible what they do at disney or at uh, christmas time uh too bad though that they aren't doing uh, happily ever after the fireworks show they're not doing any of the fireworks shows at any of the parks which is kind of a downside because i all, i really love uh watching the fireworks show especially happily ever after that one's a lot of uh fun to watch for sure they do um what the, something really cool that they do is they still do like the 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 camera the video on magic kingdom castle so it's christmas themed it looks it's got red green it's got bows all over it and they do the exact same thing with the tower of terror uh at <laughs> in hollywood studios is they this, this is supposed to be this big scary ride and they put it uh they put these uh put the bows and to uh christmas decorations all over it it's like a, it's like a contrast of two that go to get go together and it looks it looks really cool for sure they have a bunch of a bunch of different though uh video that they put on the tower and the same with disney they put a bunch of different ones on there so that's really cool for sure some of the downsides of coming and is that some of the rides are not operating and then some of them are not operating 100 percent for instance, at Magic Kingdom, the People Mover is not operating right now, which is kind of sad because People Mover is kind of enjoyable. And then some rides that aren't operating fully uh, are uh, are Nemo, the part with the anglerfish chasing Marlin. It's been stuck right in front of the screen for a while, so it's not like moving around chasing Marlin. It's one of the de uh, it's kind of sad though. Um, I'm sure there's a couple others, and there were a couple times where the rides broke down, but that's a that's expected when it comes to Disney, though, is that stuff's going to break down. It's going to happen. I would say the biggest downside to coming to Disney or Universal at this time is that whenever you take pictures, you still have to keep the face covering on. You can't take it off, which, kind, which is a major bummer because these are memories that you want to keep for the rest of your life and those masks will always be a reminder of when it was and you want the photos to feel timeless like they could have been any time like I would have loved to have not had to wear my face covering when I was taking pictures but I understand that I have to because of uh health and safety as of right now the only way to get into Walt Disney World is to book a reservation at the uh, at the specific park you are going to and so that way they can keep track of how many people are going into the park so they can make sure it doesn't get out of hand and as of right now you can only go seven days at once you can't do more than that and then with the reservations it's like restaurants and places so restaurants what they're doing is they're doing it pretty much like universal they give you a, a qr code on a board and that's how you view the menu it, it's all virtual everything it's really easy to the app is, is pretty simple and when it comes to the quick service there might have been, there's a couple little uh issues with it like there was one time where there was an error and we had to start over the whole order at the quick service places but still um 
pretty easy. At the places where there are buffets usually, and some of the restaurants, it's all you care to enjoy, which is not buffets, but they bring you a big plate of, of, of food and you can get as much of it as you want, like places like the Garden Grill, uh, Whispering Canyon at uh, Wilderness Lodge, Chef Mickey even is doing that. And it's, it, it, I, I would say it's worth it. It's a, it's pretty, of course, Disney's expensive, but I would say that it's worth it. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. Are you guys big Disney fans? What's your favorite ride? What's your favorite park to go to? Be sure to leave those down in the comments. Like the video, share it out there, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>